For me, the top charms of Cornwall are gathered at its extreme western tip, the Penwith Peninsula. Touring this unforgettable 30-mile loop features rugged, wind-blown scenery. Content cows ignore the views. Little hamlets with their stony barns are just going through another century. Skinny country lanes are lined by towering hedgerows. I'm glad Tim's doing the driving. You can hear the branches scraping both sides of the car at the same time. The winding hedgerows built before motor traffic are an icon of Cornwall. While they may look soft, they're hard as rock. These date back to medieval times when farmers cleaned up their fields by stacking rocks to make walls lining the lanes. They have a stone frame, are filled with earth, and then are overgrown with vegetation. Those who get out of the car and hike are richly rewarded. Walking all or even part of the southwest coast path, you'll enjoy memorable moments around every corner. <laughs> this coastline had more than its share of unscrupulous trade. There were pirates, mostly state-sanctioned buccaneers, plundering the coast of France and French shipping. And there were smugglers, dealing in highly taxed contraband, like spices and booze. Tough little La Morna Cove was a favorite for smugglers. You can imagine them quietly beaching their boats by moonlight. Eventually, the cove went legit with the granite trade. Imagine the work involved in quarrying and then shipping slabs of granite from this tiny bay. The massive embankment of the River Thames back in London didn't just happen. It was made from huge stones quarried from places like this and then shipped. Nearby hides another coastal delight, Penberth Cove, a tiny fishing port. Its capstan, or winch, still hauls a few tough little boats up the cobbled landing. The stones are scarred by grooves worn by generations of hard fishing. I find this so evocative with the capstan and these old fishing boats. When you see this port, what do you think of? I mean, this is going back to the time when pilchards were a very important part of of the Cornish economy. I mean, all around the Cornish coast, there were uh, as many pilchard, little, little pilchard coves as, as they could squeeze in. What's a pilchard? Well, pilchard's a large sardine. Okay, why are they important? They were a huge part of the diet of the Cornish people and a big part of the economy of Cornwall for centuries. Whether you were a farmer, a fisherman, or a miner, it was a, a big part of your diet, how you survived the winter. So what would it be like if you lived here back when pilchards were the, 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 the key to surviving the winter? Well, you'd have a hewer up on the cliff, and uh, his job was to really look to see if the sea turned purple. If the sea turned purple, then the pilchards were coming in, and he would call with his big trumpet, shouted, heaver, heaver, which was the cry of the fish, and then they would all come running down and push the big seine boats out and pull the mile-long net out, and then everybody would come down and help out and get all five million fish in one net was the, was the most they ever caught in St Ives once. And it really helped them get through the winter. Yeah, they needed to catch those fish. If they missed it, they would possibly starve.